I'm coming, Lord. All by myself. Don't sign the rule until I get there. Amen. Amen. First of all, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's first and foremost in the head of my life. And I was gone last Sunday because I had to go to a, the bishop school, and we had a comedian at the bishop school, and he said the first thing, she said, the first thing preachers do when they get up, they tell the folk that I ain't going to be long. <laughs> and she said, and then somebody have to holler, Pharaoh, let my people go. <laughs> so I ain't going to tell you I'm going to be long this morning. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew, the 16th chapter. Matthew, the 16th chapter. And I know that says 16 through 18, but I'm going to start at verse 13. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Starting at verse 13, and our subject for this morning will come from the scripture that they have printed on the screen. But Matthew, the 16th chapter, verses 13 through 18, and I'll be reading from the common English version of the Bible. So my wording may be a little different from yours. And verse 13 said, Now that Jesus came to the area of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or the other prophets. He said, Well, what about you? Who do you say I am? Simon Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Then Jesus replied, happy are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because no human has seen this, has shown this to you, I'm sorry. Rather, the Father who is in heaven has shown you. And I tell you that you are Peter, and I build my church on this rock. The gates of hell will not prevail. And I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Black history it teaches us of the numerous contributions made by individuals of African descent. Contributions in the fields of science, pol politics, world affairs, and education. Lessons about hard work and faithfulness. And you can make it. If you try, a time when we take time to recognize the achievements of our black brothers and sisters who made great strives and sacrifices on the behalf of us. Black history celebrates the courage, endurance, and faith of black people that has gone on before us and paved the way during their struggles and even during their sorrow, headaches, and pain. Black people have to understand that God used great men and women to liberate his people. We all know that in this modern society, we as black Americans, we as African Americans, we endure struggles and we endure heartaches and pains and even we endure things that we never thought that we were encountering. But as we look at the text this morning, we find Jesus talking with his disciples. He asked them the question, who do they say that I am? The scripture says some thought John the Baptist, some thought Jeremiah, some thought Elijah. But Jesus asked Peter directly, who do you say that I am? Peter replied, you are Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus was pleased with his answer and he changed Peter's name. 
then it goes on to say Jesus proclaimed that the rock that they are standing on will be where he built his church. But I came to ask some of you this morning and, and tell some of you this morning, who do your ancestors, who do your parents, who do you say that Jesus is? I remember growing up in a Pentecostal church and living with my grandmother, and she was always telling me that he's a rock in a weary land. He was always telling me he's a shelter in the time of need. He always tell me that he is the one that takes us from place to place and keeps us safe from hurt, harm, or danger. Jesus is the one that knows all about us. He knows our troubles. He knows our struggles. But most of all, he will supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory. Jesus, Mary's baby, who Herod tried to kill, grew up preaching and teaching in the synagogue, preaching and teaching to us about what it needs to do to receive salvation. What it, we need to do in order to see him once this whole life on this side of the earth is done, we want to see Jesus, but first we must repent of our sins and confess with our mouth that he is Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Yes, then Jesus proclaimed that he'll build his church on this rock that the gates of hell couldn't stand against it. Here I find the scripture says upon years the church, especially the black church, have thrived because of the rock. The rock was usually one person who gave countless service for the cause of the church, a person who went above and beyond the call of duty in order to advance God's kingdom. This person usually not concerned with what a he or she could get out of the church, but only what they could contribute to the church. And now we got everybody in the church, if you do something for them, they got their hand out. Maybe I'm at the wrong church. <laughs> what happened to the old folks that went from house to house? What happened to the old folks that came to church and did stuff in the church and didn't ask for any pay? What happened to those who came to church and did clean the church, they cooked in the church, but they didn't ask anything because they knew that they was in the house of the Lord and that they were doing work of God and then their reward would only be when they see Jesus. You've gotten away from doing what we could do for the church and now it's what the church can do for us. We need to get back to what we can do for the church because what we do for God will last. All other things will pass away but what we do for Christ will only last. We talk about Jesus and the black church for countless years. The black church was a place where black people could go for information, their source of comfort, and to be informed. The black church was a vehicle for education, and they were not afraid to take a stance on what was wrong or suspect. Now, with all the stuff going on, we can't hear a peep out of the church. The church has become silent. With all the craziness going on in the world, the church has become silent. We are as people of God should stand up for what is right. When they're cutting uh, programs for our children, we're silent. When we're cutting programs to help our elderly, we're quiet. When our neighborhoods are going to hell because of the violence, we're quiet. We need to be able to get up and stand and tell the world that we live for Christ and for Christ we die. What happened to the church 
going to council meetings marching? What happened to the church going to the state house to march? What happened to the church holding rallies to let people know that the injustices that we see every day will not be tolerated? We made it. But not all of us made it. It was some people that you don't want nothing to do with now that march for you. It was those people that you don't want nothing to do with now that fought for you. It was those people that you don't remember or you remember them but you just don't remember to tell your children about them. That, that, that it was them who paved the way for us to have what we have now. It was the church where they came and organized to go out and march for injustices. It was the church where they came to educate. It was the church. And now, the church's task, in my belief, is to teach our children about who we are. Because they're taking black history, they're taking everything concerning us out of the schools. So how will they know about their ancestors? How will they know about where we came from if we as a church and we as a people don't tell them about who we are? Yes, it's left up to us to tell them about who we are. Uh See, the black church is the church that Paul helped build. Uh It's the interesting that the oldest church in the world or the church is not the church called the Vatican. Uh It's not the Greek Orthodox Church Uh or any other so-called denomination but the oldest church is in Ethiopia. And it's called the Ethiopian Occident Church. Born in the fourth century. And why is that? Because it was a black church. It was a black church. Christianity did not start just when slaves were brought to America. They were worshiping and praising God and know who Jesus was even back in the 4th century. A lot of your church fathers were black folks. A lot of folks that, 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 that we take our beliefs and take our rituals as after was black folks back in Africa. This stuff didn't migrate over here and the white people all of a sudden had it. We had it there. It came on the ship with us because we knew who God was way before we got on the ship. They worshiped God even in the midst of the transportation from old Africa to America they knew who God was. And because the church itself is black, Jesus was not some blonde eye, blonde hair, blue eye person. He was somebody, I'm going to mess you all up now. He was somebody that looked just like you and me. But when we came to America, they portrayed him as a blue-eyed, blonde-headed person. The black church is us. Only to get people out to vote, but to teach the importance of voting and how to vote. Teaching people how to discern between candidates, platforms, and records. Not only telling parents to train up their child in the way they should go, but also taking lead uh-huh. in parenting classes. Yeah. This is the one that, I, that gets me. Not only telling the children that education is important, 
but taking lead in after school programs and tutoring programs and computer classes. This is what the black church, you and I, need to do. And I know this may seem like a racist message, but it's Black History Month. Amen. And you're being taught about your history. Yeah. This is something that we need to teach every day, not just the 28 days in February, Amen. but every day of the year. Yeah. Time has come for the black church to move to a new level. Oh, yeah. The black oh. church has come a mighty, mighty long way. But it's still got a long way to go. The black church must never be satisfied with just getting out of Egypt. But the black church must continue to strive for the promised land of equality. But see what gets me with us. We are so afraid, I would say. We talk about who we are as a church but soon as Sunday morning is over we close up our doors Come on now. soon the only other time during the week we open up our doors is for Bible study churches put up gates to keep the folk out some folk don't want people in the church because they can mess up the sanctuary. They don't want folk in the church because they can do this or do that. But I just remember as a child that I stayed in the church even as a little dirty rascal. I stayed in the church because we had Bible study. We had choir practice. We had everything to teach us about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, we might as well burn the church down. Come on. We put too much emphasis yeah. on the building. Yeah. We need to quit thinking about the building. Yeah, the building is important. The building is someplace that we come together. It's supposed to be the physical church. Yeah. Yeah. But what about people who don't have? We scared our noses up full who don't look like us, don't smell like us, don't dress like us. And when they come to church, you slide way down to the other side. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Amen. I'm all right this morning. We got to get rid of this craziness. Because yeah. God loves us all. We all are God's children. Yes. Yes. And what, what, what gets me the most is, is these churches who think they're better than any other church. Church can't get them to heaven. No bigger how big a building, or how many members you got, if your soul ain't right. All right. All right. You could be the best preacher in the world, but if your soul ain't right, if you hadn't confessed Jesus Christ as your Savior. What gets me, oh, I got it. 2,000 members. <laughs> but is your 2,000 members so right? All right. All right. You can have a million members, but if all of them on their way to hell, what do they say about you? All right. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I'm getting off my soapbox and preach my sermon. See, we as the black church must go back to the altar. We got to fall down on our knees 
and go back to our first love, which is Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's two things the black church must do to regain her rightful place and influence this world. We have first have to remember. That's why Dr. Woodson saw the need for this month. Mm -hmm. Remember where you were and who brought you from a mighty long way. Mm -hmm. Remember who picked you up and turned you around. Mm -hmm. Remember who was a friend when you were friendless. Mm -hmm. Remember that when folk turned their back on you, Jesus was still there. Oh, yes. Remember when you didn't have a dime in your pocket, Jesus made a way out of no way. Yes. Remember when persons persecute you, Jesus was stood right by your side. Right. Yeah, we get away from that. We get away from that. See, I remember growing up, people used to sing the song, Take me back, dear Lord. Take me back. To the place where I first believe. Take me back. And then once the black church remembers from which we came and who brought us safe this far, the second thing we have to do is repent. Remember, repent means turn away from and to turn towards. We turn away from this evil world and turn towards God. The black church must remember to turn away from the lures of the world and turn to God of our weary years. Turn away from as our Savior. And see, I think a lot of times we've taken Jesus out of the church and replaced it with everything else. Everything else. Those hymns mean a whole lot of, to us because that's all we had at one time. Those hymns. Amen. Thomas Dorsey and those other wrote writers, they wrote hymns because that's all we had. Yeah. Uh, I remember in the church we had the old scrub board, old washboard. And people used to have old clothes hanging and, watch and make music yeah. with the washboard. Yeah. Yeah. I can hear the old folks saying, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amen. Save your wretch yeah. like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found blind, but now I see. I can hear him saying, what a friend I have in Jesus. All our griefs and bears. Take it to the Lord in prayer. I can hear him say, Jesus, keep me near the cross. But now we don't sing those hymns. Sing this other contemporary music in the church and sometimes I think this contemporary music get us lost Amen. Amen. we need to go back sometime and remember the hymns remember in the garden alone while the dew is still on the ground the song says it I, it tells me that I, he tells me that I am his own he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own we forget about those type of hymns. We forget about those hymns. And nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash all of your sins away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. And there's nothing wrong with these contemporary things, but we have to remember where we came. Ain't nothing wrong with, with, with whatever his name, Kurt Franklin is talking about stomp. But every now and then, you need some James Cleveland. Right. Oh, yes. Ain't nothing wrong with, Le what's his name, Lacrease or whatever his name is. But every now and then, you need some Shirley Caesar. Right. Ain't nothing wrong with Ty Tribbett. But every now and then, you need some Dorothy Norwood. Right. Every now and then, you need some Lee Williams. Every now and then, you need some, some, some the, the Hawkins in your life. Yes. Uh -huh. I'm done. Right. We have to remember that Jesus just didn't come here when we came to America. And the black church was in existence way before we come to America. 
Why you think they celebrated Mother Emmanuel down in Charleston? Because truth be told, Henry Ford didn't make no car. He stole the idea from the black man who came up with the idea. But what you got see now, Ford. Probably ain't paid a fella nothing. But I'm gone. that you turn in your hymnals to page 12 or turn to page 12 in your United Methodist hymnals as we prepare for the Lord's Supper turn to page 12 in your United Methodist hymnals as we prepare for the great giving Christ our Lord invites to his table all who loves him who earnestly repent of their sins 